Hello and welcome to Women's Corner, the show in which I talk to women who are doing inspiring things with their life. On today's show, I'll be talking to Danielle Brand, author of the book Players Feeds the Unconventional Woman. Danielle, welcome. Hi, nice It's great you. to have you with us on Women's Corner. Thank you. Um, let, let's start off by talking about your book. Now, you use the character Michaela um, to talk about the trials and tribulations of relationships and, and life in general. But you're really keen to say, well, look, actually, this, this book is based on your life. Okay, um, well, it was, it was based on my life. Um, how I got to the conclusion of writing this book was um, I went to my pastor and um, he told me to write a few things down that, you know, was troubling me, you know, mm -hmm. so I said, okay, wrote it down, got four A4 sides of writing and he was like, wow, you really need to write a book with this, you know, you've held in so many things, you're really emotional, I think there's a lot of anger, you know, behind it all. So I sat down and I wrote it down and then I ended up with a full scale book and I thought, you know, let me do this, you know, I, I can actually express what I've gone through for other women and hopefully from reading what I've gone through that, you know, it will help them as well. In your, in your idea or your estimation, what is a, a player? For me, a player is someone who manipulates another person, um, doesn't actually really care about them, it's just for their sexual need. Um, they kind of draw people in and, you know, kind of make them think that they like them, but they actually don't. I mean, speaking of players, there's, there's one character. I mean, it's, it's important to say that all the names in the book have, have been changed uh, to protect uh, the real-life characters' uh, identities. Mm. But there's, there's one character in the book that struck me called Dwayne. Yeah. Um, and he seems, or well, you seem to have a very kind of relationship where, where Dwayne has a great deal of control, but you stay in this relationship for quite a long time. What makes you stay? Well, the fact that everybody kind of told me in the beginning, you know, he's not good for you. You know, you, you, you've got to leave, you know, he's not going to make you happy, you know, you've got so much going for you. But then it's when things started to go wrong and all the bad things started to happen. You know, in the story I portrayed Michaela, you know, wanting to stay with him because she wanted to prove everyone wrong. You know, she didn't want to hear the words, I told you so. So she kept him believing that she could change him when in fact she couldn't. You know, it was out of her control in the sense that she couldn't change the person he was. You know, he had to do that for himself. Now, I mean, you talk about um, Michaela. W within the book, she talks about her, her achievements, her a really good education that she has. But Dwayne's not the only kind of player, if you will. There are other players. And I guess the question is, why do you think that Michaela is drawn to the same type of man where the, the end result so, is the same, which is hurt and, and pain? Yeah, well, I think after going through the emotional hurt with Dwayne, she kind of kept with the same kind of guy, so she repeated the cycle. And I think when she had lost her self-worth, she lost her self-esteem, it didn't mean anything to her because that's all she felt she was, you know, able to have. So I think she put in her head, you know, well, I'm not worth anything else, you know, I'm not going to get anyone better. So she just went with what came her way and it wasn't good for her. So rather than thinking, you know what, I'm better than this, I can do this and I can have someone that will treat me right, mm -hmm. she goes, well, I'm used to, you know, it's kind of, I'm used to something, so she got comfortable with it rather than thinking, you know what, I want to change the pattern. And what do you think attracts women uh, to players? Well, the fact that, you know, it's an excitement. You know, players tend to want to do lots of stuff. They kind of ooh and woo you. They do special things to make you feel special, even though there's probably seven other special people out there. And I think it's just the excitement of having, like, a bad boy, because they are a kind of bad boy in a way, because they like to do nice, mischievous things. So I think in a sense where... You see them, they're very confident, they draw you in, you, you know, they're good looking, they've got the gift of the gab, they say the right things, you know, they, they could not even necessarily, you know, mean what they say, but it's the fact that they're so special to you. Um, I think if a player's obviously always on his phone, you kind of sense that, you know, you know, what's that all about if he's continuously on his phone, you know, a player sometimes, you know, will clear his call register in his phone because obviously he doesn't want you to see who he's calling, mm -hmm. text messages in the phone. But I think the initial overconfident behaviour, you know, they won't accept no if you kind of turn them down because they think that they have all that they can, you know, to get you into the relationship. Do you think that players, um, in your opinion at least, do you think that they can kind of spot a, a vulnerable woman on their radar? I think if a woman shows that she's very needy, um, and obviously if she's got kids and she wants someone to kind of be there for her and he senses that she needs a man in mm. her life, then he'll think, okay, well, you know what, she's, she's someone that I can target, you know, she's going to want me regardless of what I do because she doesn't want to be on her own. So I think, but also sometimes I think players 
tend to go for people that have got a lot going for themselves as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like a, it's like a drawn, a drawn, a drawing in to, to the fact that you know she's got this, she's got that, and you know she's doing things for herself. She's not going to really study what I'm kind of doing. Mm -hmm. But vulnerable more because obviously you haven't got that love for yourself because you're, you're needy. You you want something from someone. You want that that love back, and obviously they think they can give it to you. Well, our viewers have been chiming in on Twitter about what they think, or why they think, rather, some women are attracted to so-called players. At My Media Live says, some women love the excitement, good boys are considered boring. Uh, Tat City uh, says, again, excitement, good boys don't come with attention and drama. We ladies, we like a bit of that. Gagetho says, laugh out loud, I think all they want from bad boys is protection, because girls are really clever. And at OK, he says, uh, image is really important to the fairer sex. Now, um, if we turn back to your book, uh, Danielle, there were times when I was reading Michaela's story and I felt quite angry for Michaela because it seemed that, you know, she was constantly allowing people to, to mistreat her. And, you know, as a reader, you're sitting there and thinking, how much is one person going to take before they say, look, enough no. is enough? Um, how did you feel when you read back the book? When I got the actual proof copy from my publishers, I sat down and I read the book and I cried because at that point I actually realised a lot of the things that I had blocked out. Um, and I think when you're in a situation, you kind of hear other people telling you things, but other people can see things better than you can. And obviously as the reader now, I could see things where I thought, oh my God, why did I not you know, take note? Why was I not listening? But like I said, when you're in love and you think you're in love and you love someone so much, you don't listen to things. But as I read it, I cried. I said, you know, how could I let myself go through that? You allude in your book to the relationship with, or at least Michaela's relationship with her father. How significant do you think that is in the choice that a woman will make about uh, what man she chooses? I think if a female or woman has her father in her life, she has that person who could go to and be advised as a male. Um, I didn't have my dad around, so there's a lot of things I had to learn for myself. I'd go to my mum, but my mum would give her perspective as a mother, whereas if I'd had a father, I could have gone to him and said, you know what, Dad, this is what's happened, you know, what do you think as a man? You know, and if he says, okay, well, you know, this is what I went through, or this is what I think as a man, or this is what he's probably thinking of, you know, then it probably would have helped me. But then I didn't have that, you know, I just had my mum saying, no, don't be with a man, da, da, da. why? Because my mum had been on her own as well, so I used to just think she was bitter towards men. So it's men. a different perspective. It's a different think. perspective, yeah, so it was just different. I think it's a different perspective when you have a father figure in your life, mm -hmm. you know, and you have a father that can give you that security and that, you know, that comfort, that protection. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, you look for that protection from a male somewhere else. I think a man can definitely pinpoint that yeah. other guy that's no good. No good, no good, exactly, yeah. Um, OK, there'll be people at home. We've spoken a lot about men today. There are also women who are players, and we're seeing that more and more. Yes, definitely. Um, what do you think are the, the top signs for anybody who's watching, thinking, well, I'm not sure, you know, is this person a bit of a player? What, what are the signs that people should look out for, in your opinion? Well, the signs, I think, is, like I said before, you know, if someone comes up to you and they're overly confident and, you know, they're not taking no and they're nice looking and they've got, the, they've got all the right things to say mm. and, you know, they're refusing to accept the fact that you're not interested, then I think, yeah, this, this guy's... Or when he's constantly distracted by his phone or not actually paying attention or he can't turn up for a date, he's always got an excuse saying why he can't come. Mm -hmm. You know, after a certain time, you must think, well, if you actually want to date me or you want to see me, why is there always an excuse? Mm -hmm. Disappearing acts... Um, like I said, you know, if, if there's an occasion where, you know, he says he's going to come and meet you or but his friend's doing this or his phone switched off at night time, he's definitely, <laughs> definitely up to something. Something's not right. <laughs> I guess that's the thing. People do, they silence their voice even when mm. they know or they're in a voice, should I say. You kind of know. I think, like I said, I, th I had signs and you, I think as a woman, you just have an instinct that mm. something's not right but you just choose to ignore it. I mm. think it's a choice that you choose to ignore it. People say love is blind. Love is blind only if you allow it to be blind. If you open your eyes, you know, and you see certain things, you, you, you investigate. Don't just push it at the back of your mind and just think, oh, it's going to go away because it's not, because it's going to continue, and you're not investigating it. So, um, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. All right. Um, in terms of the book, you wrote the book, okay, it was a difficult path in getting the book together. How did you go about, once you'd got your, all of your ideas down, how did you go about getting a publisher? Well, what I did then, after um, I finished the book in my, as my manuscript, my draft, I went to my grandmother and I said, you know, this is what I've done, you know, can I, what do you think I should do? She was like, 
get it published, get it published, I don't care who you find, just get it done now. So um, I rang around, I emailed for months, it was about six months, I was continuously sending hundreds of emails a day, I was ringing publishing companies, people weren't calling me back, no one was responding to emails. I actually got to that point where I was like, oh, well, it's not going to happen, it's really not going to happen. And I was getting a bit stressed because I thought, do you know what, I've worked so hard, like why can't this happen for me? Mm. So then I, one day I just said, you know what, I'm not having no, I'm not even listening to no. If I have to sit down at the publishing companies and not move from there, then I will. So then I found um, a company called Memoirs um, Publishing and I emailed them first and I spoke to them and they said, you know, send us your man manuscript and we'll have a look. And I thought, oh, they're not going to take it on. They're men. They might look at it as, a, you know, as I'm targeting men. And then they said, no. It's actually a good story, you know, as a point of view from a woman and obviously us being men, you know, we want to get across in a decent way. So they took my manuscript, read it, and then from there it was just on the go. And what, what advice would you give to people who are, who are trying to get a book published? I think don't give up. Keep, keep writing, keep, keep calling, keep talking to people, air your views, you know, express yourself, go and sit down in a publishing company if you have to. Send hundreds of emails. Just, just send one and expect them to get back to you. Mm, so just important. send, yeah, just whether you send a hundred and only two reply, at least you've, you know, tried your best. And I think it's, it's determination. You know, if you're really determined to do something, mm. you can do it. So if you knock on enough doors, eventually one of those Someone doors will open. open. Yeah. All right, for those of you who are watching, who may well be intrigued about Danielle's book, you'll be pleased to know that we're offering you the chance to win a copy. All you have to do is answer this question. Which R&B artist sang this 1997 track, Don't Want to Be a Player? Okay, and so if you're sitting at home and you think you know the answer, you can send all of your answers to Women's Corner at VoxAfrica.com. The closing date is the 21st of June at 6pm. Danielle, thank you very much okay. for joining us on Women's Corner. <laughs>